Hey guys, today I'd like to talk about something called IF frequency or intermediate frequency. Uh, it's used a lot in radios and uh, frankly it's not talked about too much or you're just supposed to uh, assume to know how it works and uh, everything about it. So today we'll get into why we have intermediate frequencies and uh, how, how does it play to our advantage. Alright, so the main problem is we got um, three radio stations here as you can see. So we got three, let's just say AM radio stations, right? One guy at uh, 990 kilohertz, another radio station at 1000 kilohertz, and another radio station at 1020 kilohertz. And uh, we don't like 1000, we don't like 1020, they're a bunch of uh, Rush Limbaugh idiots. We want to listen to 990, they play some big band music and uh, we want to listen to them. And we don't want to have these guys coming in. So. Obviously, well, we'll come up with some kind of filter, right, that has a 10 kilohertz span and will hopefully be centered around 990 kilohertz. And uh, in the old days, you know, that that is exactly uh, what they tried to do. It wasn't very successful, but, you know, that was the old idea here, is they had basically a Antenna came in, they tried to make a bandpass filter around 990 kilohertz, ideally with a 10 kilohertz span. Then it went into some little detector there, uh, some headphones to hopefully hear your station. And this was the uh, main radio idea for a long, long time. The problem is making a filter with this small bandwidth up at the radio frequencies uh, was very difficult and was challenging. So, th is there any other way we can we can do this? And uh, the answer is yes. But we have to take in mind an old cosine identity that we may have learned in high school. And you said to yourself, "When the hell am I going to use this?" The idea is, says if I have a cosine wave A and a cosine wave B, and I multiply them together. Uh, the product is going to be the sum as well as the difference. And that's key right there, the difference. Basically says if we take two radio waves and multiply them together, we get the sum of the radio waves and the difference of the radio waves. Now in the receiver world, we're often interested in the difference. And that's going to be key. So what tool do you think we can use that does that? Well, there actually is a tool out there, and that's called the RF Mixer. Basically, you take the cosine wave A with frequency A, and it goes into the R port of the mixer, and you have the radio wave or cosine signal frequency B, and that goes into the L or local oscillator point of the mixer. And the output here is the I, which we call the intermediate frequency. Now straight out of the mixer we have two main products. We have the sum and the difference. So in the radio receiver world we're often interested in this difference frequency. So clearly we need to have a filter here to only pick out that guy. And that is exactly what the IF frequency does. We essentially now need to make a filter with a fixed center frequency and a fixed span. So if we're interested in AM radio waves, we would want the span to be about 10 kilohertz. That should cover the AM broadcast band's modulation bandwidth. And 455 kilohertz is a common IF or intermediate frequency that radio receivers use. So the beauty of this is, is that manufacturers can make one filter, fixed frequency, fixed span, and they can make many of these in volume because it's a fixed set. And we no longer need to make bandpass filters that are tunable. So here's how we put the whole idea together. And uh, really we have to thank Armstrong for this because this, it's amazing, this architecture is uh, still used today. So the idea here is we have some antenna, a loop antenna, whatever, comes into a low noise amplifier to amplify the signal. It then comes into the mixer, 
where it goes into the R port. Down here is a local oscillator. This is a local signal generator inside your receiver and that goes up to the L port of the mixer. And here's the I or intermediate frequency port. Here we have an IF amplifier. Here now is our standard 455 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz span. And then it goes off to uh, some DMOD circuit. So this is the standard architecture of why we use an intermediate frequency. So the idea is that as you change stations, what you're changing is not the filter anymore, but you're changing the frequency of that local oscillator, which is much easier to do than changing the bandpass of a filter and have it be stable. So this is the standard now. When you tune your radio, whether it's in your car, a little portable thing, when you're tune changing the radio station, what you're really changing is the frequency of the local oscillator that's inside that radio receiver. All right, so let's go through the example here. Like I said, we wanted to uh, we want to tune to 990 kilohertz. So we got the antenna up here. It's picking up the whole AM band coming down here, but we're really only interested in this 990 kilohertz. It goes into this mixer, and we're going to tune the LO to be 535 kilohertz, such that 990 minus 535 works out to be exactly 455 kilohertz. So hopefully you see that. And now, that's how you tune to 990 kilohertz. So if you had another radio, you could actually tune to 535 kilohertz and you would probably hear some tone, which is the local oscillator inside your main receiver. So the here, this filter is picking out the difference. Remember I said this mixer here is gonna have the sum and the difference of these two frequencies. So since we have this fixed IF filter, or intermediate frequency, centered at 455 kilohertz, we need to make an LO such that the 990 minus 455, that's the LO frequency. So if you were to take 990 and minus 535, you would get 455. So that's the purpose of IF frequency, is so that we have a fixed filter a fixed amplifier stage also in the IF frequency and then it goes off to the DMOD. So hopefully you guys can get an appreciation for what is IF frequency, why it's used, and how valuable it is. And this is what's often called the superhedrodyne receiver, um, but it is still the main architecture of receivers today. Now I've shown what's typically called down conversion. Um, this same idea can be used for what's called up conversion, basically where we go in reverse. We have a lower frequency here and we want to get it up higher to a higher frequency. We use the same idea here with the mixer, except now we'll be taking the sum to shift us further up. Well, hopefully you guys see now what is the purpose and value of mixers and how they are used specifically for IF frequency. And these are the standard uh, method in many receivers. Actually, many receivers may have many of these stages in here. So if you see something that says a triple conversion receiver, that means they have three of these mixer stages that convert it down to a final IF frequency for demodulation. But hopefully uh, that explains to you guys what's going on. And uh, if you got any more questions, always see the other videos, subscribe to the channel, and uh, hopefully you learn something. All right, thanks for watching.